Welcome back, everybody. Oh, the NBA's regular season starts today? Tonight. Hey. I didn't even realize. In the software industry, the season literally never ends. John Ford today brings us up close with the co-founder and co-CEO of both a powerful software company and a minority owner of the Utah Jazz, John. Yeah, he owns quite a bit of it. Mike Cannon Brooks leads Atlassian alongside Scott Farquhar, and they've been friends since college, and they started a software company that helps workers to collaborate. If you haven't heard of Atlassian, it's probably because they're down under. Like, literally, they're based in Australia. Not big on spending on sales and marketing, but look, the market cap's over $100 billion. So Mike's got resources, and he likes to play basketball. So when Qualtrics founder Ryan Smith approached him about forming a group and buying the Utah Jazz for $1.6 billion, Mike told me he approached his wife with the idea, gingerly. Well, the pitch was that it's it's a reasonable business, right? This is not a, a giant donation or a folly. Um, but I did know I did. She did say, oh, OK, yeah, well, you know, you love basketball and Ryan's a really good mate. Um, so the, actually two other co-owners are Ryan uh, Smith from Qualtrics and Ryan Sweeney from uh, Excel. Uh, and now we've added Dwayne Wade to the to the ownership group. And so it's just it's a great bunch of guys like it's a it's a really good group. And She's like, okay, yeah, you know, you, you're good friends. It's reasonable. Okay. When you say 1.6, is that million? I was like, uh, we're going to have to ch change this just a little bit. Um, not, not million. Uh, so that was a little bit of an interesting part of the conversation. It was like, oh, oh. Yeah, but he's a guy willing to try bold steps. And in fact, Atlassian's whole approach to customer engagement is different for the enterprise software industry. They don't spend a lot on a sales force. Conventional wisdom is that to scale a big company, you have to ramp up sales. But Ken and Brooks told me he remembers when the first order from a big customer came in unsolicited. Our first order that came in without anyone talking to the customer was American Airlines. Uh, it came in on the fax machine. And, you know, we kind of asked the three or four people we had, anyone talk to American Airlines, anyone emailed them? No, no, nobody had zero contact with this customer. They had gone to our website. They had downloaded the software. They had learned about its advantages themselves. They had installed it, tried it, put in their data, used it, decided it was good enough and decided to buy it, gone to our website, decided not to use our online commerce form, which back in 2003 was probably a good idea. <laughs> And instead downloaded the PDF, filled in with a pen their details and their credit card numbers and faxed it to us without ever talking to us. And this fax just arrived for 800 bucks. That's old school, 800 bucks. And they had the good sense, Atlassian, to raise the price after that. And Cannon Brooks uh, told me Atlassian has continued its unconventional approach to sales. It's also continued to build out collaboration tools in the pandemic era. He told me they're adding features like backgrounds that allow workers to show their personalities. That lack of connection and belonging uh, that can come from remote work is important even in software environments to fight. And kind of the typical mix is to spend, say, 15 percent on R&D, 35 percent of revenue on sales and marketing. They flip that. They hmm. spend 35 percent on R&D, 15 percent on sales and marketing. They've managed to continue growing. So I wonder, do they say, it sounds like that in that example of the American Airlines thing, that they would give away a kind of appetizer portion or, or let you try out the software. Do they still follow that as a way to scale their business? Uh, it's, a, it's a lot more established yeah, now that the customer bases are, but they did grow out of that open source movement. They yeah. were an early better on open source and on that software would just be sort of downloaded, used over the Internet, not just in a packaged way. Who are their competitors? Uh, well, you see the Slacks of the world, you know, Microsoft Teams. There are all kinds of different ways to collaborate. Salesforce has its suite. But, I mean, you look at it last year, $100 billion, they've kind of upended this model where there's a big cost that is not just creating the ideas, it's delivering them. And so they've got an advantage in being able to do it that way. And yeah. do you know why Utah for, for basketball? Is he, he's Australian. Did the opportunity just present itself? He doesn't itself? get to go well, to many Ryan games, does he? Ryan Smith. <laughs> well, maybe he does. From, well, he's, he's, he can get around. He can get around. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure he can. But Ryan Smith from Qualtrics is from Utah, right? So Qualtrics is based there. They've been friends. So that was kind of the connection. Yeah. But, but to, to, do, to build a company of that scale, I couldn't name other companies from Australia at $100 oh. billion value. I'm sure there's some mining companies down there that are. Um, I'm trying to think of the one that I can't 
call back, but they're no. not a lot. No. I mean, this is a, a unicorn among unicorns. I don't know. Well, you have to invent another mythical shimmer. I don't know. But um, in, in Australia, he talks about they have this idea, the tyranny of distance, where you've got to figure it out when you're in the outback and there's a problem to solve. And so they have that baked into their culture because, yeah, that they didn't have a lot like them, especially starting in 2002, that's after the dot-com bust. They didn't raise a lot of VC because they couldn't out there. They figured it out. Now they got a big chunk of a big company. Yeah. And you don't think of, you, you certainly don't think of uh, Australia as a, as a hyper center of, of software, and, but there you go. There and you and go. now with remote work, hey. Yeah. You can right? be anywhere. Yeah. Incredible. Sydney sounds pretty good. Okay. <laughs> that was with, so with funny company. when his wife asked 1.6 million. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah. John, always good to see you, man.